Derek Lavasser is a retired sergeant and co-host of the Crime Weekly podcast. He's also been closely following this case, and he is joining us live tonight. Uh, we appreciate you coming back on. I'd love for you to fill in some of the holes here um, that, that police were able, to, as the grandfather said, Mike said, they threw some cards out on the table. Um, what do you make of the timing of this announcement and the plea for the public's health and help in this case? I think it's extremely important. I'm hoping that they're on a, in a position now where they believe this account may have communicated with Libby or Abby at some point. And I think what they're hoping is this individual may have only sent one or two photos to these girls. However, if it's correct, the information that's out there, they may, may have sent one or two photos to many young girls. And if we're able to gather all of those photos, we may be able to identify this person, whether it's Keegan Klein, whether it's an associate of Keegan Klein, or whether it's someone all diff uh, completely different. I was looking at the one photo that I, I flagged on Twitter. You can clearly see a vehicle. You can clearly see a neighborhood. It may not be, be familiar to me or you, but it would be familiar to someone who's from that area. The vehicle itself, I was looking at it briefly. It appears to be, from my past experience, a Nissan 350Z. Did Keegan Klein own a 350Z? Did someone he knew own a 350Z? These are all questions that law enforcement is attempting to answer, and my hope is that one of these other girls actually had a, an encounter with this individual behind the account, whether it was by phone or in person, because that would really be advantageous to solving this case. Well, and does it, does it say to you that if they are looking for the public's help in identifying the person or people behind this, trying to make any sort of connection, that they may have a lack of DNA evidence to, to say they have a suspect in this case? It could be that or it could be the exact opposite. They may have a person, they may have a DNA profile and they're looking to identify anyone associated with this account because this individual may have had a chain of communication with Libby or Abby that suggested they were gonna be at the trails on that day. And if they find a person that matches the photos that they're able to accumulate through different parties who've had experiences with this account, they may be able to then get a search warrant and gain the team DNA profile of the individual that they're now honing in on and see if it matches DNA that they've already accumulated at the scene of the crime. I don't want to draw any false conclusions here, but as I'm reading about Keegan Klein, I want to understand the timing of the police's release of this information and the plea to the public based on what we already know about him. We've got his mugshot out there. We know that less than two weeks after the girls were killed, they searched his home. There, there was some indication that they had sparked an interest in this individual. Now we understand that he's got a pretrial hearing. They searched his home recently and they took his dog. Um, you're closer to this than most. What does all of this mean? And are we drawing a conclusion or are the police trying to, to share a strategy? Well, I, I mean, police have come right out and said that they're neither going to confirm or deny that this individual is connected to this case directly, but they do want information on this profile. You know, it could be a coincidence that they they conducted a search warrant on his house in 2017. Um, I don't think that's the case, um, but it wasn't until 2020 that he was actually arrested. I think they're at a point right now from people that I've spoken to that they're relooking at everything they had. And, and, and seeing it through a different set of eyes, different investigators looking at it, it has been almost five years, as you've mentioned. So they may have found something in there that they think is valuable, and now they're reaching out to the public for help. As uh, Michael said on the previous segment just now, sometimes in these cases, there's just not enough, even though we have audio and video. So they're reaching out to the public, asking them to assist in solving this case. Wow. Well, there's a lot of clues there, and, and one of the most important ones was captured on Libby's phone. Not only the image of the man walking along that road, but also the voice of that man. Was there any additional clues that you know of on her phone or any social media that the girls may have been on that could help as evidence? No, everything that's been put out there is what's out there. There are people who've covered this case way more extensively than I have. What I would say to everybody out there is take a second look at the video, take another listen to the audio, and think about February of 2017 and the people in your own life. Does this individual sound or look like someone that you personally know? And was that individual in the area of Delphi during that time frame, whether it was because they resided there or they were just traveling through? And if you can, think about their behavior during that. That time where they displaying characteristics that weren't normal to their to what they usually displayed and if the answer is yes to any of those questions do the right thing call it into law enforcement and let them make the determination whether or not that information is valuable 
Right, and look closely at the video that we were just playing on your screen, the way that man walks, what he was wearing, uh, his facial expressions, anything that stands out to you. Derek, uh, we appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, we'll continue to follow it closely. Thank you. Thanks for having me. If you have any information about the murders of Abby or Libby or details on that Anthony Schatz social media account, again, that's that fake account associated with this new person who we had the mugshot of today, Keegan Klein, you are asked to contact the tip line. That number and email are on your screen right now. The family, as you have heard, desperate for some answers. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.